Good afternoon, YouTube. This is your man, the All The Rage George Page, coming to you live, live on YouTube. Well, I got this, you know, this is a classic movie that everybody has seen. If you have not seen it, you were living in a mountain, in a, in a cave in a mountain in the back of the moon or something like that. This is Rocky, starring Sylvester Stallone, Taya Shire, Burt Young, um, uh, Carl Weathers. You know, it's one of the, you know, Burt is Meredith. It's one of those classics, classic, it's a classic boxing movie. It's not just a movie about boxing. But it's about a movie about of underdog becoming a hero. And, you know, this movie was written, the screenplay was written by Sylvester Stallone. And the movie came out in 1976. And also Stallone uh, worked the uh, choreography for the boxing choreography for the movie. Now, the story of Rocky Balboa, who was a, a poor working class guy. He was a part time enforcer for, uh, a, uh, I think, a bookie. And also, he um, was a like a kind of a club fighter. He, he didn't fight in the big time thing. He's like, you remember in the first part of the movie, he fighting in some kind of um, basement of a church or something like that. Anyway, Rocky is a hero. Everybody, you know, we, everybody who watched the movie, it's just it's the story of an underdog. As you know, in the movie, Carl Weathers, who plays Apollo Creed, the champion, you know, he's looking for a fight because one of the fighters dropped out or something. I forgot. And then they handpick Rocky out of a book, out of a, a bunch of other fighters. So, you know, Rocky, you know, gets the opportunity to fight. So he approaches Burgess Meredith's character, who's Mickey. His name is Mick, or Mickey, you know, like call him. And um, Mickey turned him down first, but then he, you know, later on changed his mind. So they start training Rocky for the fight. So, you know, we already know the story. Is. Everybody knows the story is that, you know, Rocky loses the first fight. And then, because of that, he becomes a hero. You know, there's that people look at that, that moral victory or that uh, so like that's not. I don't know what people are talking about moral victories for because it's not a win. It's not really. But like I said, it was that made him. This is a movie that made you know the character Rocky a hero, and also it won in the next year, seventy seven. It won Sylvester Stallone his first Oscar for best screenplay. And that's a lot of people. That's the one thing that Stallone has over uh, Schwarzenegger. He has an Oscar. Anyway, a few years later, comes Rocky Two, in which you know, as you know, Rocky, because of his um, win over Apollo, even though he lost because Apollo Creed, you know, people see him as his hero, his underdog. You know, he gets his little success. You know, he's a uh, he marries Adrian. He gets a little money. One point in the story, he found out he can't read because he was doing a commercial, and she helps him to read and become a better person. So, anyway. The story goes that Apollo Creed felt like, you know, he felt like he won that fight, you know. But even though the even though people feel like Rocky won it in a way, so he decided to have a rematch with Rocky. So Rocky, you know, he goes back him and um he goes back to Mick and they start training. You know. And then Rocky faces Apollo Creed. But this time Rocky actually wins. And he wins by being the first one standing up at the ten count. And that was just, you know, one of the best parts of the movie. And, you know, Rocky, you know, as you know, you know, Adrian had a baby, had a baby, and she almost died. And, um, you know, he said, you know, he said to, you know, uh, you know, did this for you, Adrian. You know, you know, you're Adrian. I did it. I did it. <laughs> it's one of the, you know, one of those classic scenes. But anyway, the next, next couple years later comes Rocky Three. And you know, the main villain in this one is the character Clobber Lang, played by Mr. T. Now, as you know, uh, Clobber Lang was a hungry, up-and-coming fighter uh, who was just winning. And he challenged, he called out Rocky. Remember the part we go to when Rocky, that statue dedicated to him by the city of Philadelphia? And he calls out Rocky, you know, and then tells, uh, you know, Adrian, come to my apartment, I'll show you where a real man's out about. <laughs> but, hey, woman! Hey, woman! <laughs> but, um, as you know, that statue was there for a good while. They took it down and then they moved it. And I think it's somewhere in a park in Philadelphia now. I think that statue been moved about a couple of times because I think the city of Philadelphia didn't want to pay keep it up because it was just for the movie. But, you know, you know, it's, it's that, it's that the, I think it's the, was it the museum? If anybody knows, it was the museum or was it the, uh, um, the library in Philadelphia where that, that statue originally was at? You know, when Rocky runs up the steps and then the kids are following him in the next movie? But anyway, um, Cobble Lane beats Rocky, and at one point, you know, Mick even dies in that movie. You know, you know, Mer character Mickey dies because he tried to stop Rocky from fighting Cobble Lane because he saw that Cobble Lane was hungry. You know, he had all that that he had that you know fire in him, 
So, you know, after he loses, Rocky is approached by Apollo Creed. And Apollo tells him because he wants him to beat um, Carl Lang because Carl Lang has no respect for the past or champions. You know, you know, he has respect for Rocky. So he takes uh, Rocky back to the, his old um, stopping grounds back in um, the West Coast. And they train and try to build him up, try to give him some rhythm, you know, and try to get that iron tiger back in him. So, you know, you know that part where um, the heart's on fire, soul desire, you know, him and Rocky are running down, up and down the beach. And then, you know, one famous song, back it up, back on the streets. I took my lumps, I took my chances. You know, you know, Eye of the Tiger, that's, you know, that's a, a classic movie. No, Heart Desire, that's Rocky IV, sorry. But anyway, anyway, yo, Rocky beats Clobber Lane. And, you know, he, you know, he just convinced that he's the true champion. Next movie is Rocky IV. And you know Rocky IV is where the movie series becomes more of an action series than it is. Um, the movie starred uh, um, you know, Dolph Lundgren as uh, well, Ivan Draco and Bridget Nielsen, who was at the time Sylvester Stallone's wife. You know, I think his second wife or third wife, I forgot. And they played uh, Russians come to America. And Apollo Creed said one of the side is one decided to fight this Russian in this, this machine. He's beating all these guys convincingly, knocking them out. So Apollo challenges um, Ivan Draco to a fight. And then, you know, he's getting beat just to death. I mean, he's almost just, you know, and Rocky wants to stop it. But Apollo said, no, 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 you don't want to stop it. Don't stop it. Don't stop it. And there's a part of the movie where Rocky's about to throw in the towel. And Tony, you know, the trainer played by um, the late um, Tony Parker, you know, saying, throw the damn towel. Oh, the damn towel! You know, it's just one of the collections. You know, we even uh, see his comedy sports every now and then. My man Coach will play that thing where we see a fight. And you know, there's some fights that should have been, uh, especially in, in um, UFC. In, in, there's some fights where the, the trainers should throw the time towel when we see a fight go down like that. But anyway, Apollo dies in the ring. And Rocky is, you know, wants to avenge his friend's death. So he challenged, he too challenges uh, Ivan Draco, who is the father of Valentino Shashenko. This is Valentino's father, Ivan Drago. It's true. I did a video on it. But anyway, um, you know, Rocky challenges um, Drago and they go back to his backyard of Russia. And Rocky goes to Siberia to train. So while he's training, like old-fashioned way, picking up old rocks and, you know, and, uh, and lifting people in a, in a, 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 a carriage, Ivan Draco's training with the best high-tech machines and everything, getting stuff with steroids. So then they finally come to fight. Rocky's getting beat. But then one part of the fight, about the middle of the rounds, Rocky hits Drago and makes him bleed. So they keep going back and forth, and Drago loses because Rocky wins. And Rocky makes an announcement saying we're all the same race and everything like that. And people were cheering for Rocky, even in Russia. And, you know, and they actually had played Mikhail Gorbachev. They had a great, I mean, this guy, this guy was, you know, he must have been making money back then when he was doing the Miguel Gorbachev. But anyway, then we have Rocky V. Rocky comes back after the fight from Russia and he's changed. It's, you know, doctor told him that he has to be careful now because of the, um, how hard Drago hit and the damage he got. He had brain damage. But also notes to Rocky, he is broke. Because Paulie, his brother-in-law, who's an idiot, Signed power attorney to their lawyer, and the lawyer took all their money. So Rocky and his family had to move back to his old neighborhood. And then Rocky took over the gym that Mick had run, you know. And there's this young uh, young guy come named Tommy Gunn, and he's a you know young boxer played by Tommy Morrison, who's people don't mean not few people know that he is, is the nephew of Mary Morrison, A.K.A. the Duke John Wayne. Yeah, I think he's a great nephew. Anyway. Tommy wanted to fight because, you know, he wanted to prove himself. So Rocky started training because he saw something in him that he saw himself. So Rocky trains him and pulls him up. And he starts to become a good fighter. But then there's this other guy who kind of played like a Don King kind of character. And he sees, he wants, he was rich and wanted the Rocky to fight his, his champion. But Rocky couldn't fight because, you know, he, you know, the issue with his brain. You know, he knew he would go fight one time. You know, he might die. But anyway, Tommy's coming up. You know, he's doing pretty good. And then he get a chance at a, at a title shot. He wins. But then his head gets big because the other guy you know, starts swelling his head up. And then people, reporters tell him that he's not Rocky Balboa. 
even though Rocky trains you, he's not Rocky, you're not Rocky Balboa. So he goes out and challenges Rocky. And here Rocky has a scene where they had a street fight. At one point, Rocky is about to go out, but then that part where Mick said, if you hear that little angel on your shoulder, get up, get some of that bitch. Bitch, I love you. And Rocky gets up and said, I hear no bell. And Rocky just went back to his old street fight starting file. I mean, he was just whooping that boy's ass. And then, you know, this is part from the movie. Well, it's not, it's not part, it's from the movie, but it's not in the movie. Right now, Sylvester uh, Stallone's working on a new um, director's cut. And he's going to add that to the movie. A lot of people don't know that. They, they, he shaked his hand and get him up. You know. But anyway, one more movie is coming up after that is Rocky Balboa. Now, Rocky is about 60 now. He uh, owns a restaurant. You know, Adrian has passed away. You know, uh, you know um, his, him and his son are estranged. And, um, you know, he's just, you know, trying to go into motion. But the character called Mason Dixon, played by Antonio Tarver, was feel like, you know, he was getting, you know, he feel like he was in a Rocky shadow, you know. So he decided to call out and challenge Rocky. Rocky felt like he wanted to come back. But, you know, the fighting commission felt like, you're too old, you know. They don't want to be responsible for a death of an old man. But somehow, some way, he was able to get a chance for the fight. And Rocky called upon Tony, played by you know, Duke, a.k.a. Duke, played by Tony Parker, to come back and help him train. And he just really just trained for just to build himself up. And even his son got along and joined him in, in to, with this fight. You know, I didn't really see much of Rocky Balboa, you know, as you know, eh, after a while, I think after Rocky V, kind of, you know, you know, but, and then Rocky didn't win this fight, and, you know, it just, he had respect from the champ. So, you know, as you know, and then after that, you know, you have the uh, Creed movies. So I'm going to talk about that. But the reason why I'm talking about Rocky is I want to compare somebody to Rocky. To Nietzsche Tripper Tenet. You know, it was about a week ago when Tanisha had fought Danielle Wolf in a fight that she should have won. You know. And, you know, Danielle Wolf is like, you know, this, you know, paper champion. You know, the, the UFC was, you know, looking for somebody, so they picked a hand-picked cherry uh, opponent. And they thought they could get a win. But truthfully, the people saw the fact that Tanisha Tennant really should have won. Tanisha is Rocky. She's our Rocky. She's the UFC's Rocky. She's M WMA's Rocky. She's the woman who came in, faced, you know, just totally stacked odds. And even though she didn't win, she won the hearts and respects of the people. There's, you know, if you follow, you know, I'm gonna put Tisha's um, IG, you know, IG's um, uh, information in the description because I follow her on IG, and people we really respect Tanisha. She has come a long way, as you know. She fought, you know, in the Victor a while back in the um, uh, Phoenix series, and won three straight fights, and barely came off without, uh, you know, a lot, of, a, lot of a blemish. Her opponents, she just whooped up on. And she just beat him and beat him. I mean, you know, she just came up. And then she gets this opportunity. The UFC calls her, you know, and she should be fighting as a bantam weight. That's her natural weight. And she, she fights Daniel Wolf. But we know what happens. Wolf is given a win, which he does not deserve. Even say it was by unanimous decision, where no way in hell it was a unanimous decision. At one point in the second round, you remember, she got, she was like covering up. She almost, that fight should have been stopped if Tanisha would merely, if Tanisha had gunned it more. You know, throw a few more kicks. Danielle Wolf is a paper champ. They're going to throw a couple of jabroni fights. And maybe if, if Amanda, um, uh, uh, Amanda um, Nunes is still champion, uh, which she is, is going to be still champion after fighting Megan Anderson, then they're going to probably, you know, put her against, um, uh, Amanda Nunes, but she's a paper champ. But you know what? There could be anybody or a better featherweight who can beat a uh, wolf. But right now, Tanisha's our Rocky. You know, she got the respect of the of the MMA world and community, the respect of the people, and respect of just the community, just the total, just all respect dudes. This woman, Tanisha. You know, should have been fighting for the Victor 135 championship. And then, if she was, was good enough, then, you know, UFC should pick her up then. They already picked up people like, I said again, Miranda uh, Maverick, who didn't even fight for the title. You know, because they're afraid that she'd get pieced up by Vanessa Porto. They defeated, they picked up um, 
uh, Kay Hansen, who wasn't even a title holder. They picked up J.U. Fry, who got stripped of a title. You know, the last couple of fighters they picked up were mostly fighters who had won a title. You know, fortunately, I think Felicia Spencer should have stayed in a little bit longer before they picked her up. But they just tried to pick her up because they need a body. But Tanisha is our Rocky. Yeah. Yo, Rocky! Yo, Tanisha! You know, I give her much respect. And still, you know, she still wants to come back. I'm hoping that uh, maybe she can shoot for the Bellator title. I mean, not for Bellator title, for the uh, Invicta title. And maybe win that, and maybe they, they draft her. Or they might well just keep on um, standby, just in case a fighter drops out. Especially in the 135 division. Yeah, they've been dropping like fires a lot lately. Like I said, this is respect to the triple threat Tanisha Tennant. You are Rocky. Hey, yo! You have the eye of the tiger and your heart's desire. This is your man, Audrey Joy Page. Like, don't like, subscribe. I'm out.